Hello, viewers. It's I, James Comer, half assed reporter, and we are back. Today, we're going to have a little geography lesson. If you've been watching the calm report of the rough cut for any period of time, you know that I have a fascination with the various neighborhoods, especially the neighborhoods where there are a lot of galleries and artists and things like that. And a couple years ago, we started spending a lot of time on the Bowery and the Lower East Side. Before that, we'd been running around out in Bushwick, and before that, we were in Williamsburg and, of course, Chelsea. And now, we're going to explore a little bit of a new neighborhood. Well, not so new, but it's got a bunch of galleries that have opened here recently. And it's called Tribeca which translates as the Triangle Below Canal Street. Uh, this last Friday night, I think they had the main opening for the season, and there was something like 12 galleries that opened down here, and I picked up a map recently, and they're calling this the Tribeca Soho area, and I think that there was about 21 or 25 galleries, something like that, with probably a six or seven block radius down here so we're gonna drive around and take take a look at some of the galleries you've seen some of them before like right here Canada let's start out here okay. well this is my first visit to uh, the new Canada I think this is something like 60 Lisbonard Yes, I am. Well, this is actually ironic because I've been following Canada. They moved over here from, it was Grand Street about six months ago. Before that, I think they were on Christie Street for about five years. And then uh, before that, they actually started out around the corner on South Broadway in the basement of the Leo Koenig Gallery. This is getting back to some real ancient history. We'll just uh, stroll through this exhibition by Sahar Khoury. Kind of uh, sculpture slash wall sculpture painting. This piece is untitled Belts with Lola Sitting 2019. Glaze ceramic bronze and belts. Okay, so that's nice, the little. Uh, Cat that looks like it's made out of uh, duct tape. I assume it's cast bronze. It's titled "Untitled Wall Piece with Purple Blobs." Purple blobs. I like the description. Paper mache and textile mache. Glazed ceramic, steel acrylic, and oil stick. This is untitled. Wall relief with blue glaze and green lines, 2019. Paper and textile mache, glaze ceramic, steel spray paint, and oil stick. See, Sahara's got a pretty good uh, color sense. This is untitled. 1900-1999 with Pearl Sleeping. 
Geez, I think we must have gotten here in the middle of a uh, Trebekah art tour. Paper mache reflective tape, enamel belts, bronze. And we've got another bronze cat. Okay, now we're gonna get to uh, look at some paintings by Xyler Jane, X-Y-L-O-R Jane. It's titled Jupiter Square, 2019. Ink and oil on panel. And, uh, okay, so Xyler's got some kind of uh, interesting reflective pearlescent things going on on the surface and uh, well, I think one of the other interesting things about Zeiler's work is that a lot of this is dealing with numbers, codes, grids This is called, titled Manny Petty, 2019, oil on panel, 43 by 47 inches. And uh, yes, Xyler has got a kind of uh, obsessive uh, technique here. Also, I'm looking at uh, these little beads of paint and thinking that uh, some of this almost has the sense of braille that you could somehow rub your fingers over the top and distinguish the code. I believe this one is titled number 11, 2019. Oil and ink on panel. Well, I, uh, I like the idea of painting systems. We saw a show by Leslie Roberts last week in uh, Dumbo at Minuspace, and Leslie's one of my uh, favorite contemporary painters here on the scene, and she's doing work that's dealing with grids and codes and text. See, this one is titled Three Lakes and Two Heavens. And they're just calling this oil and ink on panel, but again, there's kind of a, uh, a palette of metallic or pearlescence, so maybe you've got uh, bronzes and coppers and uh, maybe a brass. Titled Good Night Kiss, oil and ink on panel. This is 31 by 29. Okay, so I'm also noticing that uh, Xyler sometimes leaves the wood from the panel show through. Let's it show through. Also, I'm thinking that uh, this is like a more highly obsessualized, uh, more complicated version of some of the pattern decorative painters. It's titled Clown Bar.
Well, I just uh, get a little vertigo looking at a piece like this and thinking about um, all the time you would spend making the dots. Okay, so if we look up closely, you can see how Zaylor is using grids of repeated patterns and then varying it almost numerically, slowly, almost like uh, pixels to get a kind of a fade of the color. It's titled Full Night's Tour. Oil and ink on panel. And even though this is a simpler composition, it's not totally simple. You can look closely and see where there are uh, little slices on some of the um, lines. So you kind of uh, intuit that there are other lines that have been painted over with the black. And gosh, as I'm looking at this, I'm even noting that uh, some of these little black sections are varying between a greenish black and a, say a raw umber black or a Prussian blue black. Tenth Order Magic Square. Ink and oil on panel. Well, yes, the Magic Square is an ancient uh, the geometrical problem, device. In its most simple form, it's a square that's divided into nine smaller squares. I think uh, Ad Reinhardt used it to a certain extent, and uh, other people have used it using the numerical designations of each square. This is No More Tears. And this is a great example of Taylor's use of numbers. So we've got this square that's broken down into maybe a hundred squares. This is 99, so. You start out with zero one. Now I wonder if uh, she's got some kind of a numerical thing on each one of the squares. So can you find your age? Can you find my age? Okay, I'm, I'm getting up towards the bottom end of this these days. Yeah. So that was a quick look at Zaylor Jane and Sahar Ohari at the New Canada. Okay, let's check out Patrick Parrish. So this is a show by Hannah Eschel, painting and sculpture, 1960 to 1985. Oh boy, 
there are a lot of works in here, so I'm not going to give you the titles. So I could probably uh, guess at the mediums. Let's see that this looks like acrylic on burlap. A lot of these are probably in the 16 by 20, 18 by 24 category. Untitled Marble Sculpture 1970s. Well, this is easy for me. These are all untitled. I kind of like the uh, the wedges out of the sphere. Installation here under this folding polyoptic. Here's a little stroll through of Hannah Eschel. Yeah, yeah. And Patrick Parrish, 50 Lisbonard. Now let's run into Denny Dimon. Well, I would have been here for the uh, kind of the neighborhood opening for the season, but I was uh, having a date night with Kate. I did uh, sneak by and peek in the windows, though, and uh, I was interested in this show. Aaron O'Keefe seeing things. This is an archival print, pigment print, edition of three. Well, I've been talking a little bit recently about some of the uh, kind of the melding of digital photo imagery various types of printing and kind of cross-mediation of work. And uh, I think this kind of fits into that category. It's titled Blue Flip 2019, archival pigment print, 50 by 40 inches. Actually, when I was looking through the window, I thought these were paintings, and uh, I was thinking about Le Corbusier's paintings and his friend Ozenfant's kind of their uh, P 
purists, purist paintings from the late teens, early 20s. And also there was a, uh, I guess fairly well-known American painter named Patrick Henry Bruce. He was a student of Matisse at the time and he was doing kind of still lifes that relate to this. This is titled Ripple, 25 by 20. This is titled Column. And, uh, well, the mirrors are an in interesting. Problem, but I do like the uh, slabs of pure color. Gosh, there's Patty Johnson. Hello. It's titled B side plywood paint mirror, 18 by 24. Well, I guess that means that this really is the hot new neighborhood. I'll make this brief. It's not a blue scallop. Forty by thirty two. Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, well. So that was Aaron O'Keefe here at Denny Dimon. We're going to keep rolling on at least one more shot. Chelsea, a gallery in the Lower East Side, now one here in Tribeca. Okay. James Cohen. Josiah McHelney. Observations at night. Okay, well, this is a... Uh, beautiful, well-appointed space. Oh, more mirrors and boxes. This is titled Three Twilight Labyrinths. Hand-blown mirrored glass. Transparent and low iron industrial mirror. Blue mirror, oak. Blue dye and stain, electric lighting, hardware, architectural interventions made of sheetrock, metal studs, plaster, and latex paint. Okay, so we've got to cut out sections of the wall to set these pieces in. Everybody knows. Three Twilight Labyrinths is an architectural installation 
built to display a triptych of framed trompe quote, paintings, unquote. Each painting within the triptych depicts a nocturnal still life of labyrinthine and infinitely mirrored spaces inhabited by a veritable alchemical pharmacy of mercury-like mirrored stoppered bottles and jars. The work's title suggests the ways in which reality begins to shift at twilight. While the illusion generated by the architectural intervention speaks to the malleability of perception. There's six paintings from the observation series. Acrylic on board with inset hand formed and polished micro mosaic glass, black mirror and ash frame, 21 by 21. They don't get into the uh, technical parts of this. So it'll be interesting to know about these central discs. <laughs> these are depicted abstracted versions of Deep Night Sky. Okay. titled Seven Observations for June Tyson 2019. Acrylic on board with inset, hand formed and polished micro mosaic glass, black mirror and ash frame. The largest painting in the exhibition is also a part of the observation series. Described above is composed of seven different observations. Okay, it's kind of neat. The work is dedicated to June Tyson who performed in the Sun Ra Orchestra from 1968 until her death in 1992. Okay, Sun Ra. Well, we dig Sun Ra. And, uh, well, we're gonna wrap up here, but it looks like uh, we missed a concert. So I wonder if these guys are part of Sun Ra. Just gonna uh, sneak around and look at the uh, facilities here. This is beautiful. Okay. Well, that was our initial Trebekah tour. And this has been Josiah McClenny, Observations at Night, here at James Cohen, 48 Walker Street. You can like this, share, recommend it to your friends, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, and criticisms below. We just ask you to say 
Thank you, Kate, and thanks, New York. Was that Bach? It was. It was a teenager. It was a teenager. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. That's great.